There are generally three situations that might lead to a gene test uh, in Huntington's disease. One would be diagnostic testing in a person who has symptoms that are suspected to be due to Huntington's disease to confirm the diagnosis or to rule out the diagnosis. A second reason for genetic testing is to have predictive testing. This would be relevant for somebody whose parent has Huntington's disease and, uh, and the person wants to know, do I or don't I have the gene that causes the disease, but at a time when they don't feel that they have any symptoms. And the third situation where somebody might want a gene test is uh, for prenatal or pre-implantation testing uh, of a, of a, uh, as part of their reproductive uh, planning. Diagnostic testing for Huntington's disease is pretty straightforward. Um, a patient comes with some kind of symptoms uh, that seem as though they may be due to Huntington's disease, and it's fairly straightforward to simply do the gene test to confirm the suspected diagnosis, or in some cases to rule out the suspected diagnosis. The challenge comes uh, in that this is a genetic condition and pretty much immediately when a patient is given a diagnosis of Huntington's disease, um, one of their major concerns is what this means for their children or for other family members. So the clinician who's doing a gene test in Huntington's disease needs to be at, le at least a little bit aware that um, the implications of the results extend beyond the patient themselves uh, to other family members. So the clinician needs to either be prepared to explain the genetic risk to other family members themselves or to refer the patient or family members to a genetic counselor who can help provide that kind of information. There have been uh, several guidelines written for predictive testing in Huntington's disease, one by the World Federation of Neurology, uh, one by the Huntington's Disease Society of America, and then a recently revised set of guidelines written by the European Huntington's Disease Network that talk about how to provide predictive testing in a um, safe and sensitive way. Um, it's important for patients to have genetic counseling before they have a predictive gene test, both to ensure that they understand what the results of the gene test will tell them and what the results of the gene test won't tell them. Uh, essentially, it gives you a yes or no, I will or won't develop Huntington's disease, but it doesn't tell you when the disease symptoms are going to begin. Prenatal testing refers to the testing of a fetus, um, usually at um, somewhere between um, eight to 14 weeks of pregnancy, um, with the idea that if the um, fetus tests positive, um, there's a therapeutic option of potentially terminating the pregnancy. Um, obviously, this kind of testing is very um, emotionally charged. Uh, there's, there's time pressures, and it, it obviously is best for the patient to have spoken with their obstetrician and a genetic counselor before the pregnancy occurs. For many people in the United States, prenatal testing is not a reasonable option, but another type of test that can be done is um, called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This makes use of in vitro fertilization technology so that the woman produces a number of eggs. The eggs are fertilized by the sperm and grown up to uh, an embryo stage. And each embryo then is tested for the Huntington's gene. And um, only an embryo that's free of the Huntington's gene is then implanted. So pre-implantation genetic diagnosis avoids the issue of um, pregnancy termination. Um, and it allows patients to have children that they know are free of the abnormal gene. So for a small number of families, this has been a, a, a wonderful option.